We're ready. Hello to Kirby and Kristen. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'm discussing my nail color. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I was asking <laughs> where I could get it because I'll have it by next week. So okay. Fine. I think we all will then <laughs> after you guys get it. Um, I'm going to start with Jana Seitzer. Hi. Hello. So you two um, have a great friendship and connection in this movie. If you could describe that friendship in one word, what would it be? In the movie, um, trust, supportive. Yeah, yeah. I would say. <laughs> okay, that was a fast question, fast answer. I love it. Uh, Renisha, Queen Thrifty, you're up. So I really enjoyed the film. It was hilarious. I wanted to know what was your favorite part um, during the taping, either behind the scenes or something that actually made it into the movie? Actually, do you know what one of my favorite parts was that I forgot was when we, we a, a big chunk of the scene got cut out, but was the, was the sushi restaurant. And we just had, could sit and eat sushi that uh -huh. night. That was very fun. Yes. <laughs> there, well, look, it's, it, it, it sincerely is hard to pick a moment because being on set with, Kirby because we're actually friends every moment is kind of fun like there weren't like a bunch of dull parts because you're getting to hang out with a real friend but like I think I particularly liked we'd been shooting the movie for a few weeks we knew what our dynamic was we like working together we're passing the ball trying to make it as funny as real as possible enter BB Rexa who changes the comedic dynamic completely because all of the sudden she is in, she's the expert tech expert we go to helping us move our money and we are like these little idiots who are asking her questions and we were able to find like funny improvs and just the dynamic shift happened because prior to that we were sort of ping-ponging figuring out like okay who's going to be the straight person in the scene and who's going to have the goofy moment because you kind of have to balance it if you're going to stay grounded but when those scenes with bb was really fun because we could both sort of just be goofballs yeah she was the, like the voice of reason. Thank you. Heather, Pink Ninja. Hello, hello. I was just wondering for each one of you, is there a part of your character that you identify with in real life? Oh, wow. I mean, at, at moments, sure. Like, but in different ways, I think like there are, <sighs> It's hard for me to say because I didn't struggle with infertility, but man, have I spent moments of my life imagining what it might be like and having an intense amount of empathy for women that struggle with it. And then thinking, gosh, we should be talking more about that. I should ask my friends if everything's okay, if they're struggling with infertility, like all those kinds of things. And then I, I am obviously not in a marriage that makes me feel completely stunted, but I do relate to Connie in, in the idea that like, I didn't grow up with much financial education. I mean, I think I did, but when you enter into adulthood, we should be educating kids very, very differently about savings and money and um, investments, especially girls, because mm -hmm. like it, that example of like, she can't get out of this marriage until she's got herself together is all too true for so many women. didn't answer it at all, but. <laughs> no, that was great. That was great. Um, thank you so much. Shell. Hi, I was wondering if you were building a coupon stockpile today or next week, because who knows how long we'll be stuck at home now. Uh, what would be in your stockpile? What are some of your favorite things? What would be in my stockpile? Um, I would have, these are going to be weird items, pumpkin seeds, because I've gotten really into them lately. Um, mm, I feel like if I'm going to be like, if I'm going to do this for real, they need to be like dry goods, not like fridge items. A lot of the things I want would be fridge items, right. but if we're going to go dried goods, we're going to go pumpkin seeds, we're going to go black lentils, we're going to go... Um, I'm going to add an emperor's rice. It's a real Ooh, good source of yeah. vitamins and minerals, guys. A little coconut milk, a little mango on the top. Tell your kids it's dessert, A+. plus. Really good olive oil. Really good olive oil. I just discovered, what's that bar? I just discovered this bar at this age. First time in my life I've ever had it. 
It's a peanut butter bar. It's not a Snickers. It's like nutty and like got Payday. No, no. It's like crumbled nuts. It's sort of like somewhere between peanut butter and a wafer, and it's all in a bar. Vanilla? No. No. Is it a candy? Yes. It's chocolate. It's peanutty. <sighs> well, that whatever thing, it is, we butter need butterfinger. You know, butterfinger. Yes, butterfinger. Yeah, there you go. I know my chocolate. Yes. Yes. I want yes. all of them. I just discovered it. I want a whole shed of butterfingers. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> okay. See, I know my chocolate. Yeah, thank you. You're thank very you. welcome. Okay. That would bug me all day. <laughs> Robin, you're I up. I would definitely add chocolate to yeah. that. No, but like a Tony's chocolate bar. I love these chocolate bars called Conda chocolates out of Ghana. They're like just exceptional. You got to have some candy because if you're stockpiling, it means you're thinking about the apocalypse. And if the apocalypse is coming, have some good stuff in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Well, then if we go in there, then I'm also going to need some Walker salt and vinegar crisps, a 12 bar. I'm going to need a lot of goodies from the UK as well. Okay. Honestly, good and bad question because we could do this all day. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I am. Robin, Mom the Magnificent. Hi, ladies. I just want to say thanks for such a fun movie. I love the chemistry between you both. Um, I'd love to know, what do you hope women watching will learn or get from this film? Um, you said it so brilliantly in the other interview. About the about chosen family? Chosen family and then doing, accomplishing your dreams. Oh, yeah. Doing. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you for reminding yeah. me. Um, I would say, <laughs> as Kristen has perfectly reminded me, well, I would say that what I hope women take away from it is the idea that if you have been, even if you feel like you have been discounted or discarded, you having the opportunity and seeing that you can take your your sort of destiny in your own hands you can take your life into your own hands and if things if you were dealt a certain set of cards you have the ability to to change it. i think you just have to have the confidence to know that that is within you that you can sort of strive for better that you deserve better and that you can you can get the things that you want and get the things that you need i don't know if i said it as yeah well. you okay, did well you. and also she had said before like and you can do that with chosen family like don't be afraid of chosen family don't feel stunted by the people around you like that it's something that's huge in my life and it's big in jojo and connie's life and and with chosen family and the abil the the sort of inner strength you really can accomplish your dreams it might not be this one it might not be a 40 million dollar illegal empire but whatever it is just the steam to go for it yeah Shell, did I get you? I'm sorry, I got so distracted with my butterfinger. Yep, you're good. Okay, great. All right, then we are on to Tessa. Hey, ladies, thanks for taking the time today. Uh, both of your characters are like committing these crimes, yet both like so relatable and lovable. Can you talk about like being able to create that dynamic? Yeah, I think when you start a, a, a script out with, some sympathetic facts about someone and you and you see that they are innately good and then you give them someone around them that they treat well like our relationship is admirable it's like I, you can tell that connie loves jojo and jojo loves connie by minute 20 you can let them do anything and, yeah. and people will root for them yeah i 100 agree i think that's the that's the the basis that's why you root for them is because you see that they are doing something that is beyond themselves. And I think we can all relate to that. When you are trying your best, not just for you, it's not about centering yourself, it's about improving the lives, not only of yourself, but of the people around you. Wonderful, thank you. Amanda. Hi, Kristen and Kirby. So both of your roles, there were real physical demands in this too. Especially, you know, Kirby, you had that dance scene which I love. That was one of my favorite scenes. So I just wanted to know some details about that. Did you did you freestyle? Because listen, I I know some dance moves, and you had it. You had it. <laughs> I wish I could say I freestyled that whole thing that I did it in one take. But I did have a choreographer that I worked with. That actually, the reason why I chose her is because I did uh, a dance class in the park with her. My friend was like, my friend teaches this dance class in the park. Would you like to come? 
And I was like, sure, oh, why not? What else are we doing? There's nowhere else to be. We're all outdoors and we're safe. And it was so fun. And actually what I really loved is when I've done dance classes in the past, it's been so much about like, you got to hit this and everyone's going to look the same and it's going to be perfect. But her dance was so much more about like, let's just have fun and just feel it. And I felt like when I got this script and saw that moment, I felt like that was the exact energy that was needed for that, which was this, she's so excited. She's so happy. She's on such a high. She just wants to have fun in that moment. And then Kristen had some severely uh, uh, challenging, I feel like, physical demands in this role. Yeah, and a lot, which is always great as an actor when you put the time in that were cut. So, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was cut. It's you great. Were, you were doing, it's good. She was race walking, like, learn how to race walk. A, like a lot. Yeah, like had a coach come over every other day into my driveway. My kids were doing it with me and they're like, why does it look so funny? Um, but the reality is like learning about race walking there, it looks like the goofiest thing you could accomplish, but it's incredibly specific movements and it's an incredibly, the, the specificity of how their feet have to be, the sport is incredibly specific and it is much, much harder than it looks because you're using both sprinting muscles and the like long-term running muscles at the same time. Is that what it's called? No. Uh, but I know long you mean it's, like, it's long distance. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's different muscles that sprinters or long distance runners use, yeah. and you're using literally both of them at the same time. So it is fatiguing, and it's a hard sport. I feel like there might have been shin splints involved. I'm not sure. <laughs> Lynette, go for it. Hi, Kirby and Kristen. Thank you for being here with us, and thank you for the funny film. So I would love to know what about the story or the project itself made you want to be a part of it. Um, for me, um, I got a text from Kristen at night that said, do you like working with me and can you do an American accent? And I said yes to both. And she was like, okay, I'm sending you a script. So she sent me this script and I read it and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's like nothing I'd ever read before. And this kind of comedy really appeals to me as well. It's like, it's a buddy comedy, but it's grounded and it has a message and it touches on all these themes that I had never seen before. And then on top of it, knowing that I would work with someone that I'm so comfortable with and so fond of. And, and I mean, to work with someone who can text you at night and be like the, essentially the most cryptic text. <laughs> and you could be like, yes, I'm going to commit six months of my life to this. You know, you're in good hands. <laughs> Love it. Um, Ashley. Hi ladies, thank you so much for taking the time. So you kind of touched on it earlier with your stockpiling questions. So I know you're gonna say chocolate, we got that covered, chocolate, salt and vinegar chips, which are also my favorite. <laughs> but if you had all that money that your characters had to spend, what would be the most like outrageous thing you would buy first? I honestly, when I think about having a lot of money, I think about what I can do with it. That to me is almost like the only point of having ex excessive amounts of money is what you can do with it for other people. So honestly, if I was to just like drop into a $40 million fortune, the first thing I would do would be buy my mom a house, buy my brother a house, put money away, for, put like large amounts of money away for my niece and nephew. And then probably just like maybe hire somewhere like I don't know rent a boat and bring all my friends on it and have a good time like similarly to Kristen I think I think money is best spent on experiences rather than things so that's what I would do I would I'd go all out on experiences experiential spending is the only way I do it well but also I'll say like I, I am overpaid and I have a savings account and I agree with Kirby like I am trying to rake it in as fast as I can because I feel like I've got a really good barometer of what to do with it. And I have bought family members' houses and I feel really proud of that because I feel like it's a, a, a responsibility that I take on um, willingly. But also like there are a ton of organizations that I support monthly that I really do believe in that I'm like, yeah, great. I have... And it, I have an unbelievable amount of opportunities in front of me and I'm overpaid. Like, why not? Just like bring it and then you let me do what I need to do when I'm spacing it out. Do you know what I mean? I'll move it around the way I think it needs to be moved around because I trust myself. But I do, I will say as far as um, experiential spending, if we're talking spending, but also I'm a really big fan of finding the like perfect gift for someone. I have like a, a, 
a file in my phone that if someone will like mention something, I'll like quickly write it down and then like, whether it's their birthday or not. Or randomly, I once got another text from Kristen um, that said, do you like matcha? And that was the end of it. And I said, of course I like matcha. And the next day, a matcha maker came to my house and I now have like professional matcha at my house. So she is a very good gift giver. Well, I feel like we all want to be friends with both of you and on that list in your phone. Um, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for such a great movie. Thanks to all of you bloggers for joining us today. And we really appreciate it. Go Queen Pins. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.